Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, Terry Smith's top six investing ratios. So question number one, which really most investors should know the answer to these days, who is Terry Smith? And then what are his top six? So Terry Smith is one of the UK's most successful fund managers and CEO of Fund Smith. He's been many, many things in his career. He authored Accounting for Growth. This is the guy who does know about stripping balance sheets to pieces, analyzing them, building up a picture of a company's performance and position. And his investment approach is seemingly quite straightforward to say, a little bit harder to execute. I want to give you just a picture of the numbers that he thinks matter when it comes to screening companies. Now, his basic aims are what? Very simple, buy good companies. I know a lot of what I say right now will be focused on that. How, how do you do it? How do you even start to look for them? Don't overpay and hold on to them. In other words, identify good companies. And Terry Smith is interested in established brands that are generating profits and cash flow. He's not into the fly-by-night of the technology world, for example. Other people are, he's not. Don't overpay, hold on to them. So let's leave two and three to one side slightly here and focus on, well, how do you go about screening good companies? Now, to make this look very simple, what makes for a good business? The reality is you need to do lots of homework, you need to do this on lots of years, and you need to reach other judgments around the edges, but fundamentally, where do you start? What's in your, your matrix, if you like? Well, for Terry Smith, there are three questions. Is the business profitable? And he is interested in profitable businesses. Some people will buy them when they're not making profits, not even selling very much. That's not the space he's occupying. So gross margin, operating margin, and Rocky, there's three. One, two, three and we're looking for six, all right? Well, that's not all. Profits alone, not enough. So is this cash generative and well run? In other words, can the business convert profits into cash on a consistent basis? And for him, that's something else. That's a thing called the cash conversion ratio. More coming up in a moment as a snapshot. And then, is it financially stable? So it's profitable, it can generate cash. Is it financially stable? So taking a long-term view, remember he's hanging on to these companies for the long term, this is not day trading. So leverage and interest cover are traditional ratios that give a good snapshot on basically whether the company is financially stable or not. So, gonna gloss over some of the technical detail here and just paint a picture as to why these are important numbers. Right, profitability first. Three ratios coming up. Gross profit margin, first of all, seemingly simple, very important calculation. So technically it is the gross profit as a percentage of sales. That's actually how you do it, if you like. What does it reveal? It reveals the core profitability of the business. By that I mean, if your business is very simple, you are simply buying in something like sandwiches from a supplier, putting your label on them, and then selling them for more money, hopefully for more money, you will have a gross profit margin on that transaction. So think of a food retailer like Marks & Spencer, buying from a supplier, repackaging, selling on. Okay, now that is not the whole picture. It's not, what, it's not everything that business does, but the gross profit margin targets your basic concept as a business and says, is it profitable? Terry Smith wants the answer to be yes, and what's more, he wants a decent gross profit margin because that will reveal, remember this is a long-term strategy, your ability to absorb shocks. A high margin gives you the ability to absorb shocks, whether those be short-term reductions in selling prices, short-term cost increases from suppliers, whatever it might be. But I did say gross margin isn't the whole picture. So how would you complete the picture? Operating profit margin. In other words, there is a point where you want to ask the question, what's the operating profit as a percentage of sales, taking account all operational costs? So this activity of buying sandwiches from suppliers, repackaging them, selling them on, what about the warehousing that's needed? What about the staff costs? Well, there's where you have your selling distribution and administration costs. They need to be factored in that will reduce your gross margin a bit, but it's a good measure of cost control. So again, Terry Smith is looking for businesses that generate operating profit, they're not losing money at this level, they have a good ability to control costs, convert gross profit into operating profit. And then thirdly, return on capital employed. Big ratio mixes the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. This is your bang per buck as an investor in the business. Why? Because it looks at PBIT or EBIT, which is a technical way of saying profit before tax and interest. So we're looking again at core profitability after all costs, minus interest, which is pure financing, not tax, because that has its own rules, as a percentage of total equity plus debt. In other words, it's the return to all the people that have provided finance, whether debt holders or equity holders. 
And it reveals the total return to all financial stakeholders and is a good measure over the long term of management effectiveness. It is bang per buck. So if this comes out of 10%, very crudely, you can say, well, that's better than a bank account. Is it more or less than I could get on a bond portfolio, for example? Probably more. How does it compare to peer group? Have they done it consistently? In other words, did that 10% just come out of nowhere? Or is this a pattern I can trace back? All those sort of key questions, if you like. Now, profitability isn't everything. So Terry Smith wants businesses that generate consistent profits, but he also wants to see cash generation, cash conversion, as it's called. So that is the relationship between operating profit and the equivalent in the cash flow statement. And the reason that matters is we want to see a business consistently turning profits into cash. And that matters because it reveals two things. Management efficiency. In other words, businesses that can keep turning profits into cash, profits into cash, they're being well run, is Terry Smith's view, where they're able to do that, and they're flexible. Because if you're generating a lot of cash, you're converting a lot of profit into cash, and you're doing it fairly quickly, you have less reliance, arguably, on external debt, for example. You've got more flexibility when it comes to taking advantage of expansion opportunities and so on. Then there's financial stability. So we're generating profits. We're converting those profits into cash long term. Remember, he's looking for a long-term view. He's, he's looking not to sell these companies. How stable are they? Leverage and interest cover. In other words, how much debt are you carrying? Can you afford it? So, how much debt are you carrying? This is the relationship between debt and equity financing as a percentage. Now, essentially, some people would say you want that to be as high as possible in a low interest rate environment because then you magnify profits. Yes, but you also magnify risk. And if you're looking for a stable, long-term profit and cash generating business, you don't want it to be loaded with risk, is the point here. So it's a window into the volatility returns. The higher the leverage, the more volatile returns will be over time. It doesn't have to be a problem, but you need to understand that's what you're getting. And it's an indication of financial stability and flexibility. If we're already highly geared, would we be able to load up on more debt even if we wanted to in the future? Possibly not. And then finally, interest cover. This is like someone saying, how big is your mortgage? You tell them a number, and then they say, can you afford it? Well, I've just told you the number, yeah, but can you afford it? And that is going to be the relationship between the interest bill you're getting every month and your salary, essentially. So you need both leverage and interest cover. So this one technically looks at profits before interest and the interest charge as a multiple. So if profits before interest 100, interest charge 25, cover is four times, for example. The higher, the better in the sense that high reveals a degree of financial comfort, an ability to meet interest charges, and an ability to absorb a rising interest rate environment. And all those things are important as a long-term investor. High ratio therefore suggests financial stability and flexibility at the same time. So there you have it. Is the business profitable? Can it convert those profits into cash? Does it have long-term financial stability and flexibility? A lot of science wrapped up into one short video. So, any questions, editor at killick.com. And if you'd like to find out more about those specific ratios, then it will be killick.com forward slash learn. And you want to be hunting down here for the ratios tab.